Hi everyone, my name is Shadisha Bennett Brody and I'm a licensed mental health counselor here at Flagler College. Today we're going to be talking about how to identify and help students at risk for suicide. Housing staff has a really unique perspective than other offices on campus. You are both more available and more knowledgeable about the college environment than your students. Plus, many students feel more comfortable talking to a peer. This means that you're in an excellent position to identify and respond to students in distress. Your job as an RA can be really challenging, so with that in mind, you have permission to not be responsible for a student's mental health, to not be responsible for predicting if a student is going to die by suicide, to not be responsible if a student attempts suicide, and to be somewhat unsure of what to do because every situation is different. The top three issues that students present within the Counseling Center is anxiety, depression, and stress. For today, we're not going to be able to get into all the reasons why a person may contemplate suicide, but do understand that suicide is the second leading cause of death for those ages 15 through 24. There usually isn't one thing that makes someone think about suicide, so we look for changes in functioning when we assess for risk. Changes can be both good and bad. Perspective really matters here. Here's an example of academics. Let's say a student who works really hard academically suddenly stops going to class and doesn't turn in their work. That would be considered a negative change in functioning. But let's say there's a student who wasn't doing their work for the semester, then all of a sudden they start working hard and turning everything in. On the surface, this sounds like a positive change, but it could be a negative for this person. They may be working hard because they've decided to complete suicide and they're tying up loose ends. I know that this makes it difficult to know if someone needs your help, but it makes sense if we accept that people are complex. It's perfectly fine to feel uncomfortable talking about suicide. I encourage you to practice talking about it with friends or peers until it feels more comfortable for you. Suicide is a complex issue, but we do know that connection is a major antidote to suicide. Having someone to listen can be quite healing. First is to ask the question, are you thinking of killing yourself or attempting suicide? Check the environment for visible signs of danger, such as pill bottles or substances. Do not use euphemisms like, are you thinking of doing something drastic? Tone is also important. Don't ask as if you're hoping that they're going to say no. Use active listening skills and give yourself enough time to listen. Do not promise confidentiality to a student who is considering suicide. Don't worry about being disloyal. If in doubt, act. It can be tough, but from my perspective, I would rather have a friend who is alive and doesn't talk to me than a friend who died by suicide and we can never talk again. Asking someone if they're thinking about suicide will not give them the idea. Asking about suicide specifically helps you to know if they're in immediate danger. Validate feelings by saying things like, I'm here for you, we'll get through this together, or it sounds like you're in a lot of pain. Demonstrating empathy creates connection, which in turn reduces suicide risk. Getting others involved is not a sign that you're inexperienced or not trained. Therapists and psychiatrists often get others involved when suicide is a concern. We lean on each other, so there's no need to go it alone. Get immediate help under the following circumstances. The student has a specific plan, has a way of acting at their plan, and it is their intention to complete suicide. Also, if there's like recent major stressors like death of a loved one. If a student has recently attempted suicide and didn't seek help for it, that means that they're at higher risk. Also note if the student has no hope for the future, talks about extreme hopelessness. Another concern is if they display erratic behavior or threaten others. In this event, follow the protocol that housing has in place. Remember that you're not expected to be a counselor. Your job is to recognize what might be a problem and refer the student to support services. If the student isn't in immediate danger, then you can make a referral to care, to care or to counseling services. You can also reach out to consult with us or care for yourself if you feel overwhelmed or unsure of what to do. For the referral, you can say to the student, that's really a lot to deal with. Talking it over with a counselor might help you sort through it all. For added support, there's a suicide and crisis lifeline at 988 available 24-7. It's not a substitute for therapy, but it can help students at times when other support isn't available. Sometimes students are reluctant to accept help from care or to engage in counseling. In that case, you want to normalize help seeking. You can say hundreds of students use the Counseling Center every year. Students may also worry about confidentiality. You can let them know that services are confidential and will not go on their academic record. 
Be really honest about your concerns. You can say, what you're doing now is not working. I'm happy to help you connect to people who can help you find healthier ways of being. Don't forget your own self-care. You're all doing really important and challenging work. Take time to invest in you and lean on your support system. Thank you all for everything that you do. And I'm gonna leave you all with this quote by Susan Weisberry. With every act of self-care, your authentic self gets stronger and the critical, fearful mind gets weaker. Every act of self-care is a powerful declaration. I am on my side. I am on my side. Each day I am more and more on my own side.